So we have now finished off our collection of the first generation Intel Arc graphics cards, or at least what we can get in our region, because we've managed to pick up the Intel Arc A380. Now I know you guys have been super excited about taking a look at this one, nearly as much as us, so let's just get straight into it. So we managed to actually pick ourselves up an Intel Arc A380. We know that you guys wanted to actually see these, and the initial thoughts on this card uh, are not actually great. Unlike the actual reference models from Intel, which we do have in the A750 and the A770, which do seem to be created themselves by the GPU gods with their simple designs, very solid kind of builds and a full wraparound shroud. Well, this one kind of feels like it was just thrown together on a Friday and it's not great. On the back we have an exposed PCB, we kind of got used to not seeing that anymore even though the PCB is in a black, so at least it'll blend in with some kind of system. The actual aluminium heatsink just seems like it was just picked off of something else. It even has little mounting holes in the tide there, which are not actually used. And then we come to the plastic shroud. It is a very basic, flimsy plastic shroud that is simply held on by the fan itself. And again, just like the heatsink, it does have mounting holes around that are just not used and it's completely oversized for the card. So I'm not really sure what people were playing at with this one, but if you were to vertically mount it, it would look nice but I really wouldn't like the look of it if it was actually mounted this way. Now, you could say that maybe these were designed for things like the office PCs that people like to upgrade that don't generally have glass windows to be able to see it anyway, but they've actually included an eight pin power plug. I'm not sure why they've actually done that because these would have been perfect for that kind of upgrade, but unfortunately, many people are gonna be sorely disappointed with that because a lot of them office and older office PCs don't tend to have connections in them for them. So. I think Intel kind of missed out a little bit here. Aesthetics aside, it is an entry level graphics card from Intel with 6GB of VRAM, which gives it a little bit of a one up over things like the RX 6400 and particularly older model graphics cards, which generally it's been built to compete with. And right now, it will actually cost you around £130. Is it worth £130? Well, if you were to actually have one in your hands, you probably wouldn't think so because it is quite flimsy and it's not a brilliant build quality at all, to be honest. Of course, you guys wanna know how well we can actually game on it though. And unfortunately, there is a little bit of bad news. We've had this card now in our bench rig for a week and we pitted it against our normal list of games. So for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you'll know what those kind of games are. But unfortunately, there's a few that wouldn't even work. If you are trying to play Cyberpunk 2077, Unfortunately, that one's not gonna work. Fancy a game on Doom Eternal, that one's not gonna work either. So we had to actually replace those games with other things. And the first one that we come to mind was The Last of Us Part One, which unfortunately wouldn't work. All of those games actually crash before they even start. Although Cyberpunk would actually get to the start menu and then crash. So they were completely unplayable because you couldn't even get the games to run, which is a big shame because they actually run beautifully on the Interlock A750 as well as the A770. I'm not really sure what's going on with the card in that terms. The card should at least start the game and get to a menu, but it just simply won't. So instead, we swapped all those games out for other ones that would actually run. Hopefully we got a decent selection and we gave it a good benchmarking. So let's take out those benchmarks and then we'll take a look at what it actually could do.
So as you can see for those benchmarks, the card doesn't perform that well, or particularly it doesn't in comparison to many of the other graphics cards out there. We actually tested it in both 1080p with high settings as well as 1440p with high settings. And although it definitely is not a 1440p card, we can barely get anything over 40 frames per second, we didn't do too bad when it came to 1080p. On the channel, we generally target all graphics cards to a 1080p 60 frames per second, and this little card actually managed to get in one of our games, and that game was Back for Blood. The next game down in 1080p was of course Spider-Man Remastered, getting an average frames per second of 56, which was fantastic, and then we had Days Gone with an average of 55. The worst game on our list though, in both 1080p and 1440p, was of course God of War. This little card just couldn't keep up, getting an average of 33 in 1080p, which some people would say is kind of playable. But unfortunately, the 1% lows in that game were so low that the game was quite stuttery, so it kind of really took away from the experience. Now, when we posted about getting this card on our YouTube channel, we had a special request from someone asking us to test it against Metro Exodus. So we decided to do that while we were actually benching, and we were super shocked at the results. When running Metro Exodus in 1080p high, we managed to get an average of 69 frames per second with a 1% low of 26. That that was absolutely amazing because that game is pretty demanding and it has actually looks a pretty good game. The 26 frames per second 1% low wasn't too bad, the game wasn't that stuttery at all, it just felt reasonably smooth. But to actually try and alleviate some of that we did lower it down to a medium setting. So in 1080p a medium setting we managed to get an average of 100 frames per second with a 1% low of 36. That did smoothen out the game quite a bit and it was completely more than playable with those kind of frame rates. Just for a giggle though, we did want to test to see how well the Intel Arc A380 performed when it came to a little bit of ray tracing. And while we had Metro Exodus on, we decided to enable it. So with a 1080p high setting and ray tracing turned on, we managed to get an average of 49 frames per second, but the 1% lows actually took a crash all the way down to 14. That made the game pretty unplayable, but it did look nice. So at least the little card had that for it. So now based on all of the results of our testing, we are actually reasonably impressed with this little card. Is it actually worth £130? Well, it's going to come down to exactly who is trying to buy it. If you are somebody that only has around £130 to spend and you want a tinker, issue-free experience, try to avoid this card. There are other options out there, maybe not new, but there are plenty on the second-hand market. And for that kind of money, you can get something that will not only destroy this in terms of performance, but also stability as well. If you are still looking for something new at around this price range, you're probably gonna have two options. The first one is gonna be obviously the Interlock A380, and the second will be the AMD Radeon RX 6400. Now, to make the decision between the two, I think it comes down to what you actually wanna do with the card. If you want a graphics card that will just run straight out of the box and play games, go for the AMD Radeon because it's going to be a lot more hassle free and when we've been testing them in the past we've had no issues running any of the games but if you like to tinker with things and you like to play around and get things to work and maybe you have a little bit more patience in waiting around for new drivers the interlock could be an option for you would I purchase this again at 130 pounds probably not I would wait for this to come down to around 99 pound which to be honest is exactly where it should be in terms of the performance it provides. It's kind of like buying an AMD Radeon RX 470, which you can pick up pretty cheap nowadays. So I'm not sure why you'd want to like game on this thing if you could kind of pick that thing up. But some people buy new and this is one of those options that you can go for. The Interlock A380, it can game. It can do it reasonably well for the money, but you will get some kind of issues and you'll need extra power. The RX 6400, which I'm sure at some point we're going to put against this one because we do have one of those cards in. So make sure you subscribe if you want to uh, catch that video. It's a better card to choose if you just want stability out of the box. Now, like I say, we're going to be doing lots of things with this card, so it's not going to be the last time you see it, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below, is this card something that you would decide to have? I know there's a few of you out there that ask general questions around its performance in terms of encoding and things like that. We don't generally test that on the channel because we're more interested in gaming. We're gamers through and through, so I'm not really going to be able to answer those questions unless we decide to do some kind of video editing with it, which we generally don't. But still, let us know in the comments what you would actually do with it. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them there. And I'm sure we will catch you in the next one.